Do mark in your song those numbers 744. 744. Go for the light. Well, thinking about lesson, I always have a few things that, that trigger me from time to time. And that kind of how, how I develop lessons from time to time. Um, I have a tendency of, of talking a lot. I'm going to keep this concise and to the point. There will be scriptures on the PowerPoint here in just a second to give some references to what I'm about to be talking about, which is fellowship. Um, I cannot help first when I think about fellowship. It's Acts 2, 42. And then I'm reading from the New King James Version. Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. That's kind of what I've always thought about as fellowship over the years. And then, of course, you get deeper, and I call it more educated, and you find there's a variety of ways in fellowship and, and what we're doing. And this is what I want to kind of present to you tonight as kind of something of a, of a next level type education stuff. Um, it obviously touches all aspects of my age since I'm at the, the young age of 43 that, uh, that the things that's happened in my past. And I kind of think about it and I go all the way back to my time in, uh, in, from Bear Creek when I was uh, four. I can remember some of that. And uh, Vance Hutton and I remember PBS. I was most likely four at the time. But I remember VBS. I remember the kids that were older than me. When I went to Hamilton, I remember James Sin when he was, you know, skinny and tall. Well, he's still skinny and tall. But, uh, so that's always how I remember him in my whole life right there. He's always been skinny and tall. But he would throw football with us, talk with us right there, and uh, just others on those lines. Then I remember at Cherry Hill, and uh, uh, a lot of people my age, and I think every night, I think we were outside unless it was raining for at least an hour uh, with all the kids and the, the parents would either be inside or outside according to the heat and uh, they would talk and talk. And uh, so, and, and we would have all types, of course, VBS and all that stuff that went with it. But you progress into Maywood. I know Lily Piper and others have, have talked about the effect of VBS. I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, I think it's a little easier now than it was than back in the day when you didn't have air conditioning. But nevertheless, I think it is a great blessing. And I keep seeing it, seeing it develop and how it developed me. Then later on, I think about uh, the Christian Student Center here at UNA. The opportunities that I had, the people I met, the connections I made. Of course, this is where I also came to Wood Avenue. But on into CYC. Never realized until I went for the first time how awesome that was. And then we have some that are going to be going for the first time. Just really amazing. I remember my times up in, in Nashville and in Columbia, Tennessee with uh, young professional groups. We always, we kid about young professional groups that the, the, the dreaded plague of marriage would destroy us. And I always thought about why does it have to stop with, you know, young professionals? What, what, what happens when, you know, you have kids and you get married and stuff on those lines? And I think about from here and other places, our church softball teams, or even now that our Wood Avenue activity group, and that we have done you know a variety of trips and, and different things, and we're hopefully there's sign up sheets to do a, a lot more, and we have different things. And of course, um, also being a can't, I can't help but put a plug in for for uh, Friend Speak as we've done stuff with Friend Speak, but those connections and fellowships that we have, it gets me thinking about how we interact, how we do things. And uh, I'll, I'll put some responsibility on a few people in just a second. But finally, uh, about meals. The times I've had meals with a variety of people here. You know I like to eat. And uh, talking about a variety of activities, connecting with those people. Um, I've done that at many other places too. And those connections that I have today. Uh, I've been blessed many times to go to events that from with multiple uh, different congregations there. And I have to see friends <laughs> everywhere. It's a real blessing. Uh, into the meat of this, of this right here. First, I need to put blame on people. First, is, it's Ricky, because he's been talking in his classes about how we connect together. I like to call a retention factor as a Christian. 
staying in the faith, growing in the faith, those types of things. Um, I think, uh, I know, there's no, no thinking now how important that is it's been in my life and how it's affected my life. Then on another one, uh, Yui, one of our uh, Japanese students that's here with us. Um, you start talking with people and stuff on the lines. Um, he asks for the, the, the prayers of the congregation for his mother who has been uh, dealing with cancer and looks to be succeeding right now, but he's still worried. He wants prayers. He also wants prayers for his, his uh, brother who is looking for a job. You have these type things and, and you touch people asking for prayers. Then you get to uh, one of my friends, which kind of hurts my heart with this time right here. It hurts my heart a lot with this one. And uh, she's very intelligent. And I've known her for many years. And um, she does not see the need for regular Bible study. Does not see the need for the fellowship of coming to church and to uh, worshiping. She got, she says, all that she needs back when she was younger about the, the importance of worship. And so how can you go worship? Literally made the statement, how can you go worship, you know, one, more than once a week at that? How can you go Bible study? You know, you, you read it, you remember it, you go on right there. What? And the, just there's no application. Um, it's really sad and, and been working with her and others with her uh, too. She's five hours away, but we, we talk from time to time and, and we have others that have been able to talk with her too. But getting that importance of obviously the importance of being here on a Wednesday night to study the Bible, to fellowship with our fellow Christians and brothers in Christ, and also the worship services. Um, I've had some uh, great conversations of me just listening about the importance of worship and our fellowship with God. And, um, and I'm in our class tonight talking about going from a knowledge base to application to that communion in spirits. And sometimes it's hard. And, and uh, to you get in a routine as people that we are, but that connection that we have and how it turns. But this lesson is designed to push us and educate us into a higher level of a fellowship. Um, I like to call this an application lesson. We're going to go very quick from here on out, so I hope you listen to me very carefully. And forgive me for, I believe, at least one or two uh, typos I have up there. Fundamental facts and fellowship. Partnership in Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 5. Communion with Christ, 1 Corinthians 10 16. A partnership, or I work for Christ, uh, which is a typo up there. Uh, Philippians 1 5. Thoughts, our fellowship and thoughts. Philippians 4 8. Abiding in his presence. We just read it. Acts 2 42. Fellowship of right in righteousness. 2 Corinthians 6 14. Sharing with less fortunate, Romans 15, 26. Work, the fellowship of working one another, 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Enjoy in suffering and in worship, Acts 2, 42. We'll flip to the next one, give them a chance. With this, there's always the not, what we should not be fellowshipping with. I think it's pretty straightforward in 1 Corinthians 10, 20, Satan. We should not be fellowshipping. Works of darkness, Ephesians 5.11. With unbelievers, I challenge you to read this one. 2 Corinthians 6.14. And with error, fellowship with error. In 2 John 9.11. When we look at our fellowships in life, and we look at, at our, our fellowships through, through our lives, there it comes to a certain results that we have right there. The result of our fellowship is found... In Matthew 5:43, I mean, excuse me, 43. Matthew 25:46. That's why it's written down up there for. Matthew 25:46. It is interesting to me with this chapter and what is talked about beforehand in preparation of this. We have a parables that that, that many parables come before this, but you have some such as the parable of the wise and foolish virgins, you know, being prepared. Parable of the talents, using your abilities. And finally, it talks about judgment. And uh, I challenge you especially to read uh, Matthew 25, 31 through 46. But in this, we talk about they, they, uh, that their judgment, they divide between the left and right, those that are going to uh, heaven and those that are not. 
And it talks about uh, knowing Christ. And when people were hungry and they needed food and drink and shelter or naked, visiting, sick, all these things right here. If you did these things right here, you knew me. And then after all of that was said right here, at the very end it says in verse 46, And these will go away into everlasting punishment, those that did not do these things, but the righteous into eternal life. A lot of times we, we have fellowship in the things that we want to do. We also have, have a, activities that we get involved with that wind us up. I mean, I know football. We're out of football season right now. A little bit of withdrawals right now. It's only been a few weeks since football's been in there. But I get wound up by football. At the same time, I look at myself and how do I get wound up for saving other people? How do I do other things in fellowship? But also it's good for me to see what we just did this past Sunday. We had so many people that helped out with that. I am so proud of that. It makes my heart warm of what avenue and what they do. But I also had this nagging thing in the back of my head that that's, I guess comes from my dad and a coach that we can always do more. I know in the near future that, that we have a date for VBS. Uh, we have uh, so many other different activities that are coming up that we can be part of right here. And it just goes on and on. And uh, I feel very special to have those occasions. Uh, I talk with other people about you know, the, the opportunity after sickness to come back and do something. That when you, you have not been able to do stuff for so long and you're able to come back and do that, that it's a blessing. We'll pull this to a, a, a closure right now because I, I have talked too long. But it means a lot to me. And I hope this means a lot to you. And developing your, your fellowship with, with one another all the way from the youngest of us to the oldest of us right here and those in between that are there are transient college students that are here. Uh, I want to leave you with this. Are we fellowshipping more with, with the world or with Christ? With his people or the world? This is not saying about not going out and reaching people, but that we know the tipping point of, of being around Christians helps us to be more like Christians. And those that we fellowship around that are more like the world be more like the world. This lesson will help us to evaluate our fellowship skills and how we can improve them and make them better in our lives. Hopefully these thoughts have been encouraging to you. And if anyone's subject to the Lord's invitation, come now and together we stand to sing.